Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a Q&A video. I'm really sorry I missed this Tuesday's upload. I did have a video recorded, but then when I went to edit it, it just didn't turn out right. I thought I had my lighting figured out, but apparently I didn't. However, I have tinkered, so hopefully it should be back to normal. Uh, so instead I am filming this today, and uh, as I said, it's gonna be a Q&A video, and I'm hopefully gonna be filming two Q&A videos in a row. So this one is gonna be a more kind of personal Q&A, so um, what I do for a living, uh, travel plans, where I'm from, that kind of thing, and then the second Q&A is going to be a um, more handbag and fashion related, and that will hopefully go up as my regular Tuesday upload. So I have all the questions here. Um, the questions came from my January giveaway, so it's been a really long time. I'm really sorry I meant to film this sooner, but things just got in the way. So hopefully better late than never. Uh, there are quite a few questions to get through, so I'm gonna get stuck right in and start answering them. So the first question is probably the most popular question of all, which was what do I do for a living? So I work in marketing, I always have done. Uh, it's just something that I was really drawn to and I really enjoy, so I just kept at it. At the moment I work for a technology company and we're a B2B technology company, meaning we sell to businesses rather than consumers. It's a very niche company, so I would hazard a guess that 99% of you wouldn't have heard of it. I certainly hadn't heard of it before I went to interview there but it's very very interesting what they do so I'm very lucky to have this job um, it is very very specific so I've had to kind of learn a little bit about the industry but I guess that's all part of the learning curve of um, being in a new job I always try and switch industry every time I change job because I don't really want to get pigeonholed so previously I've worked in finance I've worked in uh, luxury hotels I did a little bit in market research all kinds of stuff but the one constant has always been marketing and I used to specialize in digital marketing now I'm much more broad I do a lot of event management, uh, I also do direct marketing, digital, all kinds of stuff, but I like it that way because it's, it's varied, it keeps it interesting and it also kind of keeps me on my toes I guess. So next question is what convinced me to first start YouTube? And that was actually my boyfriend that convinced me to do it. I was really hesitant. I just didn't think I'd be any good at it. And I didn't think anyone would watch me. And I just, I wasn't sure at all. And uh, I have been a long time YouTube watcher. I love watching YouTube videos. And I would always make my boyfriend watch them with me. I don't know why, because obviously watching makeup tutorials and handbag videos is not his thing at all but I always insist that he watches one with me um, and he not so patiently sits through them and one day he was just like to me why don't you give it a go and make YouTube videos yourself and I was like no like no one is gonna watch that and he was like no like I think you'd be good at it and in his words he thinks I have quite an expressive face which he thought would be good for YouTube so um, after a while of kind of protest protesting and saying no I decided to give it a go and the rest is history I guess. So the next question is, favorite place I visited and where I would like to visit or travel next? I feel like there are so many contenders for this and there's so many places I want to travel to. Um, so it would probably be a toss up between, actually it would probably be Canada. I actually lived in Canada for two years. I lived in Vancouver Island and I absolutely loved it there. I think they just have perfect weather and the people are so lovely and I just love Canada. So I mean, it doesn't quite count because I didn't visit, I lived there, but I still, um, yeah, I absolutely love Canada. I'd love to explore more of Canada as well. I haven't been to Montreal or Toronto, so I'd love to go there. Um, but yeah, so many places. I'd love to go to Bali. Uh, I'd like to explore uh, more of Africa. I've been to Kenya, but I'd love to go to South Africa. Um, Botswana I'd like to go to. I'd also uh, really like to go to Asia, so hopefully my mum and I are planning a big Asia trip next year, because um, I've never been at all, so I really want to do that. It was supposed to be this year, but with the flat and she's also buying a flat and just there's not enough money to do that this year. So um, hopefully we're gonna do that next year and that's something we've been planning for like 10 years. So I'm super excited. We're hopefully gonna go to Hong Kong and um, Korea obviously, um, Japan, just so many places. I'm super, super excited. So that's at the top, but yeah, so many other places on my wish list as well. Um, South America as well, just tons and tons of places. So the next question is also travel related, which is my travel plans for 2016. Uh, so I kind of mentioned that the trip this year has been postponed to next year. So I don't actually have any travel plans at the moment for 2016. I will probably go away somewhere with my boyfriend. We didn't actually have a holiday together last year, I don't think. We went to Spain for a friend's wedding, but that didn't really count. So uh, we want to go away somewhere. We're not sure where, but that's only going to be probably a week long. So nothing too major. We both have a pretty busy year ahead and obviously we have the flat, so we want to continue to kind Kind of invest in the flat and make it as nice as possible but um yeah nothing too big but I want to make um, a couple of big trips next year so uh, yeah it's all about 2017 travel plans. 
how has YouTube affected your life? Uh, so I have less time than I used to. Uh, things are very busy now. I felt like I was busy before, but now it's kind of reached a whole nother level. It's definitely made me be more organized. Um, I'd say I've also probably cut down on my social plans a little bit just because there are only so many hours in the day. So I definitely socialize less, but it's absolutely worth it because I get so much um, pleasure and it's just so much fun to do YouTube. So uh, yeah, definitely a lot busier, but. Um, just generally kind of more positive like I I feel like my life is a lot more enriched I feel like that's the wrong word but you know what I mean um, I just I've really been enjoying it so my life has definitely improved for the better I think since starting YouTube uh, what is my ethnicity so I am technically British my dad uh, was British but my mum is Korean so he was actually uh, Welsh and I was born in Wales as well but my mum is Korean so I'm half Korean half Welsh but I have a British passport did I go to uni and where and what did I study? Yes, I did go to uni. I went to the LSE, which is the London School of Economics. That's why I moved to London and that I just love London so much that I ended up staying here after university. And I studied social anthropology, which is a bit of a random one. I picked it because the little blurb said that uh, you can apply it to absolutely anything. And even though I really like marketing, I was thinking, you know, what if I want to do something else? I didn't know what that other thing might be. So I wanted to try and keep my options open. So I was like, anthropology you couldn't apply it to anything so um, I went for that and I hated it my first year but then I loved it in my second and third year so I'm really really glad I did it it was such a great experience oh and the next question is what oh goodness what have I done the next question is what was my university experience and um overwhelmingly positive I loved LSE it's a fantastic uni for anyone considering going um yeah just really great it was hard in my first year because I had come from an okay school I just went to kind of a regular sixth form it wasn't a very good school you know it wasn't <laughs> achieving an academic excellence or anything and so I found it pretty easy to get quite good grades and then when I went to uni I was undoubtedly like the dumbest person in every class like I found it really tough to adjust and everyone who was there was just so intimidating I guess everyone was so well read and educated and opinionated and just so impressive in general and I'd really never been around people like that not to kind of insult the people I went to school with but um these kids were just a whole other level it was very very intimidating so my first year I did pretty badly at school or university uh, and then it kind of took me a year to pull my socks up and then kind of give myself a pep talk and then I really tried to knuckle down in my second and third years and I really dedicated myself I spent a lot of the time in the library and I kind of conquered my course I guess if that makes sense but um, I did a lot better than I was expecting to and it was kind of a big 180 and for me it was just very much proof that if you really apply yourself and put your mind to it you can do anything because certainly to think where I started off when I went to university to where I finished like it was completely a 180 so it was a really rewarding experience because of what I put into it um, but also generally it's just a great school and the people you meet there are so interesting and varied and yeah it's just it was a very very good experience for me. How do I manage YouTube and a full-time job? Uh, so with difficulty is the honest answer you'll notice that I don't always manage my Tuesday uploads um, it definitely takes a lot of planning and also just the time it requires I don't think I was really uh, prepared uh, in terms of just how much time it will take you know I thought a 20 minute video will take 20 minutes to film you know 50 minutes to edit and I'll, I'll be done but it's like hours and hours of work like genuinely it's getting ready it's preparing for um for a video and planning what you're going to do it's doing the setup it's test shots it's actually filming it's then editing like it can take hours and hours and hours and then it's you know uploading and then instagram and social media and replying to people it just it takes a long time i'm definitely not complaining because i love it it's been so much fun but um it's definitely challenging if you have a full-time job as well so it's really kind of about time management as I mentioned before and also prioritizing like YouTube has become a really big part of my life and because I enjoy it so much it's really up there on the priority list so I say no to a lot of things because I want to stay committed and I want to make sure that I try and upload regularly um but you know if I was if it wasn't as important then you know I wouldn't upload so regularly so I would say yes to all those other plans and things like that so um for me it's about kind of prioritization and just um planning but as I said I haven't got it all figured out obviously otherwise I would be kind of super regular every Tuesday but uh, there's always room for improvement but um yeah so work in progress I would say for that one um the next question where am I uh 
my favourite TV show, so I'm not really one to kind of sit in front of the TV, switch on and then find something to watch, I only really watch kind of series at a time, so I'll hear about a series and then I'll kind of um, download it or buy it and then I will just kind of binge watch it, I guess. <laughs> so I love Scandal, I love Once Upon a Time, I love The Good Wife, The Good Wife is probably my favourite show of all time. Um, what else do I watch? I watch Suits with my boyfriend, we're both big fans of that. Um, I think that's probably it. Um, I tried watching House Cards, I kind of dropped off from that but I want to pick it up again. Um, so yeah, probably those four are my favourites. What does my boyfriend think of luxury items? Uh, so he doesn't, basically. Uh, he is like the anti-luxury guy, pretty much. Uh, he, came, well, we both came from very humble backgrounds, um, but him, he in particular has really kind of carried through the money mentality of, you know, you've got to save everything, you know, money might always be coming in. Um, he's really carried that through to kind of adult life, and so he's very, very careful with money. He pretty much spends nothing at all. He invests a lot of his money, but um, he thinks it's pretty much crazy to spend three grand on a handbag. When I first told him how much my jumbo costs, he was just, he almost died. Like, he was like, that's more than my car costs. Like, genuinely, he was so shocked. Um, so he thinks I'm completely loopy, um, but he kind of accepts it because he knows that it's such a big part of my life and how much I love it, but he's just kind of like, you do you. You keep me out of it and then, yeah, just don't remind me how much these things cost, so. <laughs> He's not into luxury at all, but um, yeah, he kind of turns a blind eye to what I do. So, next question is... Oh, uh, so this question I wanted to answer because I thought, well, I'll explain. Um, so it's wanted to know if you have any other hobbies or extreme likes other than bags. I love my bags, but I dabble in knitting and crocheting on the side. And I wanted to answer this because I actually love to knit as well. I don't do it very often, but I used to be president of my university's knitting society. And um, I wasn't particularly good at knitting, but I was good at organising. So um, I really enjoyed it. I met some great people through that. And knitting's just so fun. I think I have only pretty much knit a scarf, um, but it's very therapeutic. It's all trendy now, so you get some really cool wool. And um, yeah, I really, really like it. I don't do it much now, as I said. Um, so in terms of actual things I do now. I don't have a whole lot of time so I mean I like to read when I can and I just I like going to the movies and things like that. Just very boring things. I don't have a whole lot of time for hobbies just because YouTube is kind of my hobby and between my my job and that and seeing you know my my boyfriend and my mum my friends it doesn't leave a whole lot of time but um yeah those are the things I like to do if I have time. Next question is will I do makeup tutorials and that's probably a no just because there are so many amazing people on YouTube that do makeup tutorials, you know, you have Lisa Eldridge and Charlotte Tilbury and I would just feel ridiculous doing makeup tutorials when you have those people doing them. Um, so never say never, I might do uh, kind of get ready with me's but in terms of makeup tutorials, no plans yet but um, yeah, we'll, we'll wait and see, maybe. Uh, can I show my boyfriend is the next question and yes he has agreed to do a video with me uh, I think we're gonna wait until that room is all set up with filming just because there isn't that much space here but um, yeah he has agreed rather reluctantly but he has agreed to do it so I'm super excited to do that um, mm -mm -mm. where do I get my bed sheets from? So um, these ones are obviously just very, very plain ones. These are from the White Company, uh, but in terms of my pattern ones, I get asked that all the time. Um, so the kind of orchid one, no, it wasn't orchid, was it? It was um, cherry blossom ones. And um, the kind of other watercolor uh, flower ones were from Bluebell Grey is the brand, and I got them from a shop called Amara. I will link them down below. And then my other ones came from John Lewis. Would I do a skin routine for winter? Um, so I am planning on doing a skin routine at some point. Uh, my skin routine for winter doesn't change from summer. It's really bad, it probably should, but I just do the same thing. But I will be doing a whole skincare routine for sure. My question would be, if you could give some career advice or networking advice, what would it be? Um, so I am not very good at networking, so I don't really have a whole lot of good advice to give there. Um, maybe have a glass of wine, that's what I do anyway. Um, I'm terrible at networking, I don't like it at all. Um, but in terms of career advice, I would say um, just try really hard, which sounds so simple and just silly and obvious, but I feel like so many people kind of, you know, come to work and 
they're not necessarily have an attitude but have very clear ideas of what their job involves and what what they're willing to do whereas I've always really tried to approach every job as you know I'm willing to get my hands dirty I'm willing to roll up my sleeves and I don't care if it's technically beneath me you know nothing is beneath anyone I don't think so you know even though I've progressed a little bit in my career now I you will see me on any given day like lugging boxes around and you know for the marketing stuff and like I don't care doing that and if someone needs a cup of coffee I will happily get it for them like I don't think I'm above that at all and I think that's a really important mentality to have to show that you know you're in it in it as a team I guess and kind of doing it for the greater good and not just out for yourself I think that's really really important and just you know showing up every day and trying to give a hundred percent you know don't slack off you know know why you're there and know that you know your work does actually make a difference whether that's you know you don't have to be curing cancer but just to your team around you and if it doesn't you know find something that you do enjoy um i'm not saying that every day is a good one for me definitely not but i always um i try and make the best of every day and try and give it my 100 percent because um i know that certainly my teammates around me really appreciate it when i do because it makes their life easier and it just kind of works better for the team and the company as a whole do I have any London recommendations? Yes, I do. I have a ton. Um, I really want to do, I don't think it'll make for a very good video, but I think I'll do maybe a blog post or even a series just on some of my favorite places in London. I love eating out at new restaurants and trying out new cocktail bars. And I just have a ton that I always like to recommend to people. So I think I will do that. Um, so yeah, that's one for my blog, definitely. Next question is, which YouTubers do you watch slash art inspirations? Um, so I kind of watch a broad range of YouTubers. I don't watch that many kind of luxury YouTubers. I watch more now just because I feel like I'm kind of part of a community. I think it's amazing that everyone supports each other. So I always want to try and do that. Um, but in terms of ones I watched before I started doing YouTube, um, it was just really a kind of wide, wide mix. So I really love Makeup by Tiffany D. Um, I really like Nikki Blackhetter. She does fitness videos. I think she's really great to watch. Uh, Leanne Says, uh, I really like. Who else? Um, Gen G, I really like. Just so many, just kind of, <laughs> yeah, across a really wide range. Um, Blogilates, I think is really fun to watch. Just all kinds of things. Um, so I will link some of my favorite channels below if you're interested to check some of those out, although I'm sure they're all pretty big channels. So you will probably have heard of them already. How long does it take you to get ready for the day? Um, so generally it takes me about an hour. I can do it in 40 minutes, but uh, I try and leave an hour if I can. It depends on how much sleep I get the night before. How do you manage your time efficiently? Um, so I feel like I kind of touched upon that earlier. Um, I just, I don't know if there's like a, a trick to it. I just try and make sure that everything's very ordered in my head. I utilize to-do lists a lot. Um, I pretty much can function without to-do lists on my planner. Um, but yeah, just trying to keep a running list of what I have to do, how much time I have to do it in. I will make to-do lists even for the weekend. So generally I have a lot of stuff to do on the weekend. So I always make sure that I know what I have to do and I always kind of tick things off because that kind of keeps me motivated to know that I'm getting stuff done rather than let it um, completely overwhelm me. And also a really good trick is uh, I am a complete post-it addict. And so I use those kind of um, rectangle ones and I will never fill a second one of those. So if I have my to-do list, I will only let myself fill that one page. And if I run out of room, then that's I just can't put anything else on there. And I think that's a good way of kind of managing the number of tasks that you have so you don't get completely overwhelmed. So um, that's kind of a little tip that I've learned along the way, but generally to-do lists are kind of my, my lifesaver. Can you talk about your work? What do you do and do you enjoy it? What do you want to be in five years? So I have already kind of talked about my work. Um, I do enjoy it, I really like it. What do I want to be in five years? I would love to run my own business. That's always been um, a big dream of mine. Dan's kind of the same way. He loves business. Um, he always has a few things going and obviously we have a uh, kind of Christmas festive business together, but I would love to do something that's kind of on my own a full time at one point in the future. I don't know if that'll be in five years time, but um, I'd like to be working towards it, certainly. Next question is favorite eyeshadow palette. Um, I don't know if I have one favorite one. I've really been loving um, the Tom Ford Orchid Haze, which is what I'm wearing now. And I think that's the prettiest eyeshadow palette. So that's definitely been a favorite recently. Um, generally, I really like Too Faced palettes though. They are really good. Who is your celebrity crush? Um, I don't really have like a whole ton of celebrity crushes. I think Tom Hiddleston is very good looking and who was it that I saw the other day? Um, Eric Banner. 
Eric Banner is a very, very good looking man. So the very last question is, what is a negative or a hard part of being an active YouTuber and have you ever wanted to stop? Uh, so no, I've never wanted to stop. Um, I have just loved doing it. I haven't been doing it that long, but uh, yeah, I've just really, really enjoyed this kind of crazy journey that is YouTube. Uh, in terms of what is a negative or a hard part of being a YouTuber, I would say um, it's just the time stuff that I mentioned before, you know, doing it alongside a full-time job, um, it's, you know, it's challenging. I don't have a lot of free time to myself anymore. I feel like I should constantly be working or answering questions. And I guess that would kind of be um, a slight negative in that as my channel has grown, the communication and the engagement level has stepped up, which is obviously amazing. But just because there are so many um, channels now, it can get quite a lot to, try and keep up with everything. So, you know, there's obviously YouTube comments, but there's also um, YouTube messages and Instagram comments and Instagram messages and email and Twitter, and there's just so many things. And so it can get quite overwhelming. Um, but the flip side of that is that it's amazing because people, you know, want to talk to me and ask me questions, which is just so incredible. So, you know, it is kind of negative in that I can, it can get overwhelming, but the flip side of that is just, it's amazing that, you know, anyone is watching my channel, uh, my, my videos and, and wants to talk to me. So, you know, anytime there is a negative, the flip side is always just overwhelmingly positive as well. So very, very few negatives really. Um, I'm so appreciative of everyone that watches my channel and has supported me. Um, it's just been such a great thing. So if you are thinking about starting your channel, I would absolutely say go for it. I was literally convinced that no one would be watching me for like six months, a year. I thought I would just be sitting filming videos and having no one watch them um, and I was fully prepared for that and I wanted to do it anyway but the fact that people do want to watch them is just amazing and it's just been such yeah a great positive experience so if you're thinking about it definitely do it. It's been a really really good thing in my life so uh, only good things to say about it. So that's it for this Q&A video, my very first Q&A video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much if you submitted a question. I'm sorry if I didn't get around to answering yours. If you have a burning question, definitely leave it below and I will get back to you. Otherwise, I will probably be doing another personal or maybe just a mixed Q&A sometime in the future. Um, but my next Q&A video, which I'm hopefully gonna film just after this, is gonna be a fashion and handbag related one, as I mentioned. So thank you so much for watching if you made it this far and I will see you in my next one. Bye guys.